right quick and see what he's doing right before my class. Y'all can hear him talking. So you on the video right now. I told him I'll be calling you in a few minutes to see what you're doing. Okay, well, hold on there because I got somebody else on the other. <laughs> well, that's fine. You can, you can go ahead. I won't, just, uh -huh. I won't just tell them I was giving you a call. I got you on speaker on the video. No, I'm, no, I'm going to hang up with them. Okay, because my, my uh, meeting is at 845, so I was trying to call you before my meeting. Oh, okay, hold on. Okay. Hey. <laughs> what y'all doing? Bye, baby. She got a lot of work to do today. She got to stay busy. All right, baby, now. Stay busy. Do your work. You want to say something to the people? To the family? To the Look, process, can, process life family? Video? Yeah, they can see you. You know, I heard something on the uh, radio this morning. What's that? Uh... On the Breakfast Club, and they had a, a guest. Uh, they had a guest speaker on the phone, mm -hmm. and it was Jake's. And he was saying that they were asking him questions about how do people, how do you encourage people through this time. Uh, a pandemic, people losing their faith, and and uh, he was explaining, which is true, that you know, when you're going through something like this, you know, uh, you don't have time to be losing your faith, because you know God is still with you, right? Which is true, and uh, he said that even when Christ uh, had to suffer for all of us, God, His Father, was still with him. In the midst of that, you know, so God is still with us while we're going through this pandemic. So then, you know, he was saying that that uh, uh, they asked a question. So what do you tell your your congregation? What no? They asked them, how do you feel about some of these other uh, pastors who are still keeping the doors open and they are still meeting? And he said that he um, he knows. He knows um, that um, he knows that they're doing that. He said that he thinks that he, he he thinks that that's not a good thing to do because you're putting your you're putting your flock in the harm's way. Right. Your flock. <clears throat> right. Not Christ's flock. Not Jesus's flock. But Yo. your flock. Right. Okay. And which you and I we talk about all the time that people when they be in position they. They totally forget that the people belong, belong to, God. to the Lord. Right. And they belong to God. They think that the people really belong to them, so therefore their mind has truly switched. And their mind is no longer as looking at themselves as just vessels to just be used to help people grow. But now they believe that those people belong to them. And when they're saying, those are my flock, uh, that's my flock. So he said, my church, my, I, my church... We, we're not doing it. We're doing everything on the internet. And then he said that uh, 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 when you're putting people in harm's way like that, you know, it's, you're not really, really caring for your people. Caring for your people. This is what he said. Caring for your people. So <clears throat> that was another thing. And then, you know, something that kind of really, uh, really kind of really, um, I'm really hurt me the wrong way, but I was listening because I didn't want to judge him. But I, I always I'm learning to listen what people are saying versus being so quick to judge people when they say something. I would love to listen to the whole matter, dissect it, analyze it, and then say, "Now, Holy Spirit, what does that person mean?" Of when they're saying what they're saying. You know, are they saying it because they're not saying it the right way? Are they saying it because they really mean it from the heart? What is it they're really saying? And 
and the Holy Spirit reminded me, but remember what Christ said, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. I said, okay. So, <clears throat> the question was, well, what are the people who who, who, uh, who, who are not, uh, what is the church doing? That's what they were asking. What is the church doing to help other people uh, get through this pandemic? That was the question. And then he answered and said, but well, only those who don't know what the church is doing is the ones who don't go to church. Wow. That was his exact words. Wow. So he said, for those who don't know what the church is doing, that's because they don't go to church. They out there hanging out in the club. They out there hanging out in the streets. They out there. And see, this is what burns me up. To let you know that I don't care what your status is, you know, the Holy Spirit reminds us that he doesn't care, God doesn't care about your title, he don't care about your name, he don't care about all the good works that you have put into this earth realm, but the truth is the truth, that when, when you think that you are living the right way in the eyes of God, and you're comparing yourself to other people, you God will show you in the end that you're not living the, the correct way, the way you think. And yet now you're judging people who don't go to a, they call it the church, but we call it a religious organization. Now you're judging people who don't go, and now you're saying now you're saying that they you don't know what they're doing because they're they are not there or they don't go to church. Well, that may be true in some cases. No, we don't know what they're doing because we don't know the time of their service. We don't know the events that they got going on there. We don't know what type of uh, activities that they are getting ready to do. We don't know what type of, we don't know none of the sort. We don't, but that doesn't mean just because that he calls them the church, that they truly are the church. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, here's, he's saying that the people who don't go, who don't know what the church is doing is the people don't go to church. Well, I, we can say the same thing. For those who are, who are truly called children of God, the religious organization don't know what the true children of God is doing because the true children of God doesn't belong to a religious organization. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it was one of them things where it really, really kind of really confirmed that God is the God of all Jesus is the Lord of all, and we who truly are the children of God are not bound by a place. We are free. We are free in Christ. And this is another thing that he said, which really gave me an understanding, babe, that he truly, they, they know, babe, babe, they know. They asked him a question, well, what do you do about worship and praise, and what do you do about, you know, encouraging the people, and what do you do about those who are believers in. He said, well, you can believe at home. He said, you can worship at home. He said, you can praise God at home. Listen now, he's saying all of these things, what you can do. But yet, you but yet you don't know what the church is doing if you don't come to the, to the building. Exactly. Exactly. But he said, you can do all of this <laughs> stuff at home because of the pandemic. So now the pandemic has taken place or this particular virus has taken place over the uh, 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 over the world, now the people are forced to stay home. Now he's saying, well, you know, you can worship at home. You can believe at home. You don't have to come out of your house. You don't have to come to the building. You can do all of that, what you do at home. You don't need a choir. You don't, This is what, I, what he was saying. I wish you could listen to it. Go back and listen to it, babe. Uh, the Breakfast Club, they interviewed uh, T.D. Jakes this morning. Mm. They interviewed him this morning over the phone. And he was saying these things. This is what he was saying. So it's letting me know that, okay, well, if you know that the people can do that, and you know that the people can, can do all of that, and you can tell the people that, then why why are the people still feeling like they have to gather themselves in a set place? Because they never taught that why? while they while they had the um why they had the opportunity to be in a building, they never taught that. They always taught you had to That's be in exactly. the building. Now you don't. Now you can't be in the building. You got to come up with another uh, 
another word. <laughs> but people don't catch what he's saying. You, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, it's I like know. he's really telling on himself, and he's really saying that you really, that's beating in the building. It's not necessary. Y'all doing it because y'all just want to do it. It ain't something that God commands you to do. It ain't something that the Lord Jesus tells us that we must do. Y'all doing it because y'all want to do it. But now when you force not to be able to do it, now you tell other people, now you can believe at home. Now you can believe well, there's, and praise and worship God at your house. But there's a difference uh -oh. between there's a difference between wanting to go versus feeling like you have to go. Yes. Wanting and feeling Absolutely. obligated is two different things. They, yes. in, in some cases, with with us, we were felt like we had to, or we would be condemned, oh. or we had to, or they would look down upon you. It wasn't like it was an option. We was never taught it was an option, but all of a sudden, it well, becomes an option question. because of the times. Well, so let, so let me ask you this question: the difference between wanting to go and feel like that you have have to go. <laughs> How much more of a high percentage that a person will start feeling that down. way anyway? Do what now? You're going to stop. I said, what is the percentage of a person feeling that they have to go versus they want to go when they start to just go? And eventually it starts to turn out when they feel like that they have to be involved with it. Once they continue to want to go and then eventually they're going to start feeling like they have to go as time go on and as they consistently, because they may start off, you know, some people start off, I just want to go. And then I didn't. Start I started off, off as I had to go because I, I was to told I had to go. Right. I started off that way because right. that's how I was taught right. that way. So, right. right. <laughs> but I do so know I people mean, who go because they want to go, not because they have to. There are some people who they want, they want that corporate gathering and there's nothing wrong with that. However, when right. you when you feel wrong. like you have to, and if you don't, you're gonna go to hell, or you condemn, or they're gonna throw you to the to the wolves. Now you got an issue. Now there's a problem. There's a problem. Absolutely. So, what is the percentage just by guessing? I don't know. I don't like don't guessing percentages. Statistics. I don't know. I didn't research that. So, what? I don't know okay, if you talk so about Marshall. Would, would you feel that there would be a higher percentage? feels like they have to go versus those who want to go. I ain't saying it. give me a number. In my opinion, in, in, in my opinion, in, my, 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 my own opinion. Yeah. personal opinion, no research, which is not safe to do, but in my opinion, based on my experience and my my upbringing, it's a, I would say it's a high percentage of people saying that they have to because that's how generationally we've been taught. Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. But just because about. it's but a high doesn't mean people are not there because they want to. There are yeah. some people I do know, they don't let no one control them. They just go because they want to and they leave. I used right, to think right, something right. was wrong with them kind of people, but they they, they had the right ideal. <laughs> Is that thing on recording? Yeah, it's been recording this whole time. I'm getting ready to go to my meeting wow. though. But I'm going to um, I'm, I'm gonna make sure this is in the video. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, if you get a chance to look at it and look at the, um, uh, hear the video, just go to the Breakfast Club video, t uh, uh, interview T.D. Jakes, and you will hear the very words that what he says out of his mouth. Now, he says some good things, don't get me wrong, okay? But he also says some things that you know that are religious words and religious teaching. Yeah, this is supposed to be the, um, what I do every day. <laughs> this ended up being a T.D. Jakes and going to church <laughs> video. When I when I call Vito, this is what happens, y'all. So this is where this is what happens. So we can let me go because they're getting ready to come in. I'm seeing Karen. I'm coming okay. in now. All right, love you. Be all careful right. out there. All right, bye. bye.